Headaches and Heartaches on Midlands Today, brought to you by the beautiful Abbey Blooms Botanical Gardens and Cafe Community Initiative in Multi Farnham County, Westmeath. A wonderful space for relaxation designed to promote positive mental health and well being for all. Find Abbey Blooms Botanical Gardens on Facebook. When your friend flakes out on plans at the last minute and does it quite often. Yes, that's a call we've had in the last few minutes and shall explore in the next few with Rory Hafford, who is a psychotherapist and author. And you can find him at Lusnagrena Family Resource Centre in Longford. Good morning, Rory. Hey, Will. How are you? Great, thank you. We'll start with Kim. And I think there are going to be a lot of Kims listening to the programme this morning. I'm certainly a Kim. Because she's struggling to balance work, balance her personal life, feels she never has enough time for anything. And you know that kind of malaise and that funk you get into. How do you get out of it again? Of course, yeah, yeah. It's... It's it's, it's difficult, it is. It's, It's... the funk is really part of, of normal life. And what, what we do, I think, and we, we do it far too much, is we kind of, we, we label it first off. And if you label something, you, you have a tendency to become the label in a, in a sense. And because negative reinforcement is all around us, like every, every second story on, in, in the media is a negative one because negative bad news will stick in the mind quicker than, than anything else. So there's a, there's a natural drive to getting people to go to be, it's the shock factor and that will stick in the brain itself. But if you put stuff in your mind enough, it becomes not just a news item, but a belief. And I don't have to tell you, you know much better than I do dealing with this on a, on a, on a daily basis. Like we are in trouble in this country. So negativity is all around us. So yes, we're going to fall into a funk. But the funk is held together by a positive aspect. They are two sides of the same coin. And it's still, from a psychotherapeutic point of view, still comes down to the fact that we have a choice. We have a choice to believe one way or another. We have a choice to think positive or negative. And no matter... How many times we are assailed by people in power, and I use that term in its loosest possible form, they cannot take our choice to think in a certain way away from us. And the way things are going now, Will, I mean, that's pretty much all we have. Well... There's also the use of time and time Mm. management. And Hilda has text to recommend block scheduling, which is a concept I'm having to Google as I speak. And (laughs) she encourages you to not alone block schedule, but to make sure there's dedicated me time built in there, such as reading a book, taking a bath, relaxing in some way or other. What is block scheduling, do you know? Well, I, well I, I don't know the specific term, but I can, I can tell you generally uh, what it is. It's what most people do when they sit down to make a list and they put it on a piece of paper. Mm. But oh, I see it here, actually. Do you remember in school, you would have had your classes scheduled in blocks and yeah. you would have had from 9 to 9.40 in the morning, maths, mm. and from mm. 9.40 to 10.20, English, and so on through the day, yeah. that yeah. you would like structure your day in a similar way. Yeah, I, I, I try not to think of my school days, Will, to be honest with you. <laughs> but but, but your, your, your point is, is well made and well taken. But it, it, the paradox of time management is, is that it's not really about managing time. It's about managing self. Because if you go a little bit deeper, uh, people think that time is this, this kind of amorphous thing that's outside of us. But it's not. We are time. Philosophically, we are time. And it comes to the fore when you, you get up at five o'clock from your, your workstation and go, geez, that day flew. No, it didn't. It took exactly the same amount of time that yesterday's took. And yesterday seemed to drag. So it's you are the measurement for time. Are you enjoying it? Is it a chore? And either way, it's, it's, go- it's going to present itself as either it's gone quickly or it's gone slowly. So that's back to the fact that we are 
time itself. But I have a chance. But there, there's the trick, isn't it? Because mm. what Kim has described is where you perceive time to have gone so quickly you don't have time to do anything. Mm. So yeah. how do you well, change your perception of time for good or for bad? An, ex, ex, an excellent question, young Faulkner. Now, here, here's the thing. With the, there's actually a... There is, they call him the, the, the father of positive psychology. He's a man called Mihai Sisent Mihai. I think he's Czechoslovakian. And he came up with an equation. And his equation was, happiness flows when time flies. Now, think about that for a second. When does time fly? Time flies when you're into something, when you're fully focused on it, when you're immersed. Uh, normally, it's associated with creativity. If you sit down to write a, write a story or, or paint a picture or take photographs, it's stuff that you enjoy doing for yourself. And that's when time actually flies by. It goes the other way when things become a chore. And again, you're, you're telling yourself that they are, that they are a chore, but the time, the time passes by in exactly the same bits of chunks. But I have a challenge for the listeners, and here it is. Tomorrow, get up, get a piece of paper, and chunk up your day, or as you said, block book it. It doesn't matter if you're in work, if you're, if you're at home, whatever. Just chunk up your day, and I guarantee you, I promise you, the day will actually fly by. It's the most, it's the oddest, strangest thing because you're, you're actually prioritizing. And the other thing, Will, in relation to, to time management itself, the ability to prioritize is absolutely vital. I could come to wherever it is that you work right now and I could tell you what your priorities are. Straight away, no problem. Do you know how? It's what you're doing. Now think about that. It's what you are doing at this moment in time. That's your priority because that's what you have prioritized. And the other thing I find as well, people do get lost in, in they, they, they jump into one, one, one task, but they haven't got the task planned enough or they jump into a task that they simply don't want to do or have been putting off for a while. That's actually, they have a term for that. They call it the, look, the, the, the ugly frog. It just stays there gawking at you and never goes away until you address it. Mm. But a great, a great method for that is to chunk it up. So if you have a big task, just, and we've heard this a thousand times, chunk it up into small bite-sized pieces. And the analogy is, how do you eat an elephant? You know, small, chunked up little pieces that are actually manageable. Good point on how we perceive time when we're really absorbed, when we're really into something. Because well, if you're watching your favourite TV show, it'll fi- fly by. But if you put on a Rockness TV, for instance, it's going to feel like it's forever. <laughs> Phil, or, or, uh, please, do not pull me into the whole political world. Please. please. I, I distance myself from, from, from that nonsense completely. The other thing I meant to ask you, the interview before I came on, was with 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 a, a GAA man down in Mulligan. Did he say it would cost them a hundred thousand to get next? Yes. I mean, m- mother of divine, a hundred thousand for a couple of nets. Mm-hmm. We've lost the plot. Oh, we have. that's inflation for you, Rory. I tell you, yeah. Next question is from Lisa in Portlaoise. And again, I suspect there are a lot of leases and as we go through life, invariably people come in and people go out. But she has a friend who of late is always flaking out on plans and is always doing it at the last minute. So Lisa can't make alternative plans and if only she had a bit of notice, it would be a bit better. But nevertheless, she would like to see this person and they're they're dropping her like a hot snot. So (laughs) how does she address this without creating <laughs> friction or is that possible <laughs> like a hot snuff what finishing school did you actually go to <laughs> okay here's a <laughs> okay if the problem is plans she's making plans how about this stop making plans there's there, there's the first one that'll get that'll get you out of that but the other thing is it's it's not just you know our friends who, who flake on us the, People, people in, in the workplace come across this on, on a daily basis. 
Like, for instance, if somebody booked in for a session with me and it's at 12 o'clock and they, they, they ring you at a quarter to 12, I mean, it's, it's, so I'm losing on the double. So I can't get somebody else in because I don't have the time to do that. And it's, it's, it's a waste of a, of, of a slot for me. So people break plans all the time. The thing is, that's the what. The real question is why. Why does she do this? What's in it for her friend that she would consistently break an appointment? Because it's now habitual. It's, in, it's actually hardwired, built into her at this point. So why does she think that she can do this? Why does she feel the need to do it? And what does she get out of it? The other thing is, have a talk with her. Sit down and talk with her. Maybe she, it, it sounds bizarre, but maybe she doesn't realize that she's actually doing it. Or maybe she doesn't realize, certainly she can't realize the effect that it's having on Lisa. Now, if she's a real friend, remember, we have a tendency to label people without really thinking about the label in any great depth. If she is a real friend, she will pull for Lisa. She will come over to her side of the fence and see things from her frame of reference. The problem with this stuff, Will, is that you're trying to change the behavior of another person. And that's what's called an outside locus of control in psychology. So you're trying to enforce your will on another person. Now, in the textbooks, they always say you cannot control an outside force. You cannot control somebody else. You can only control yourself and more particularly your attitude towards it. That's where the real control is. Because you can tell even from the way the text is constructed that, that Lisa's frustrated about this. This is bothering her. This is annoying her. This is causing her to question. But the questions and the annoyance are based on somebody else. So she must pull it back. She must pull it back into herself. So one thing is, I, you could go back to ancient philosophy, and if, if you will, ancient psychotherapy on this. Reduce the importance of the event to yourself. Because it's not the event that's causing the problem. It's your attitude towards the event. Mm. Okay. <laughs> I think it's the disrespect that's causing the problem. But of course, yeah. yeah, I know you but can it, you can choose to frame it differently and be less yeah, bothered yeah. by it. Absolutely, but, but the disrespect is a negative thing. So remove the negative in as much as possible and focus on mechanically what it is that you can do to fix this or at least to live with it. Now, on the way in a few minutes, a man who has never been inside a hospital before and suddenly he has to go for an operation so you can understand why he's feeling a bit anxious, yeah. how we tackled this one. And as well as that, a very helpful contribution from Ashling towards Westmeath GAA and she says her boyfriend has bought her some fishnets of late and she has no intention of putting them on and will happily sell to Cusick Park for €100,000 if they wish. Rory Hafford is with us, psychotherapist and author. More of your comments after these. Headaches and Heartaches on Midlands Today. Brought to you by the beautiful Abbey Blooms Botanical Gardens and Cafe Community Initiative in Multi Farnham County, Westmeath. A wonderful space for relaxation designed to promote positive mental health and well being for all. Find Abbey Blooms Botanical Gardens on Facebook. Declan has to go for an operation soon and is absolutely terrified because he has never been in a hospital before and is very anxious about all of the thought of being cut open and what could go wrong and well that's where the mind goes Rory doesn't it always to the negative always to the worst case scenario it's like the plane uh, passenger who believes it's going to crash mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you see you see, you know you're spot on but, and, and the thing with this stuff Will is that you have to be careful about the way you think and it's back to the, the first item we, we did today where you are assailed by negative information now, this man, and, and it actually is not his fault in, to a great degree because th this, this is coming at him in, in, in waves, all this negative stuff. The health service, such as it is and as, as we know it today, is, it's not dripping with good, positive stories. 
And the stuff that we get are the, the stuff like the, the children's hospital and, and uh, people who have had bad experiences and, and trying to get into the hospital and all the rest of it. But most of the stuff that happens in, in the medical world is as a result of process and procedure and rules and regulations and bureaucracy and red tape. Once you get in, Irish physicians, and I include, I include nurses in this as well, are top banana. They are top of the pile. They are exceptional. And that would be something that would be echoed all over the world, like America, Australia. The Australians are actually bending over backwards to entice our medics over. My own son, I'll have you know, is a doctor and is in Australia as we speak. And I would say there's zero chance of getting the guy back because it's a wonderful uh, way of life and they are treated with absolute respect. So, back to our system. The doctors, the medics, the clinicians could not be better. Now, what? so he's in good hands. Declan is in, in, is in the finest of hands. It, I would like to know what kind of an operation he's going in for because there's, there's, there's a huge difference between brain surgery and getting a, a hangnail fixed. So that could also be something to do with it. Maybe, maybe it's, it, it's a major operation that he's going in for. But he, he needs not worry. Put your faith, put your hands in those of the experts. Doctors are, it could be argued, the most highly trained professionals on the planet. You do not get through medicine uh, in, in a... A, ha- a ham-fisted way. Yeah, but you you're, you're explaining ha- everything to the the newer part of the brain, the analytical, logical part of the brain. But yeah. the older, primitive, limbic brain is still going to perceive danger. I'm having an operation. Yeah. And for whatever reason, you know the psychology better, we always seek out, as you said, that negative, that danger. Yeah. It, it's like yeah. I had a conversation with my daughter recently because she's been on an aeroplane many times. It never crashed, but yet she saw air crash investigations one night. And yeah. no matter, doesn't you can explain all day long that air travel is the safest form of transport. Yeah. Her primitive brain is still telling her this is dangerous. Abs- abs- absolutely. And, and again, you, 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 you've got the neuroscience spot on, Will, and it's, it's actually the little stress box, the amygdala, as, it, as it's known, in the, in, in the base of the brain that never forgets. Never. So if you have a stressful event, that little section of the brain will never forget and will look for things that remind us of the original trauma. But here's the thing. There's also... What Declan could be doing is, is catastrophizing a future in his mind that hasn't happened yet, okay? And we all do it. You know, oh, I'm dreading this call, or I'm, 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 I'm dreading contact with the tax man. Or, that actually hasn't happened yet, but we've already thought the worst of it. Now, in relation to the medical world, he, it's, and the other thing, the, the point, it's a good point that you make as well to, to distinguish between the cognitive brain, as we call it, and the, the, the limbic system or the emotional brain. But remember, they're still connected. Everything in the brain is connected. Like we're told that we have sections for this and, and areas for that, but the whole thing, sure, it's connected on a cellular level. So whatever happens in one area of the brain happens in other areas as well because we are constantly in communication. So you can actually cognitively challenge your limbic system and say, now hold on, limbic system, here's the way the stuff actually works. So we are not, we are not enslaved utterly by, by our, our, our negative perception of things. We can actually argue them. But back to Declan, my advice to Declan, based on experience, is put your faith and your trust in the hands of the professionals, the medical professionals. They are exceptional. On that note, we must leave it there. And Rory, thank you for your time. We will chat again soon. And anybody wishing to look you up, you're online, psychotherapist, author at uh, Lush Nagrena Family Resource Centre in Longford as well. Take care. 
Headaches and Heartaches on Midlands Today, brought to you by the beautiful Abbey Blooms Botanical Gardens and Cafe Community Initiative in Multi Farnham County, Westmeath. A wonderful space for relaxation designed to promote positive mental health and well being for all. Find Abbey Blooms Botanical Gardens on Facebook.